to today in this video we are going to discuss about the failure of classical physics in explaining photoelectric effect setup as we know photoelectric effect uh, setup is um uh, i mean uh, is used to explain the uh, explain the particle nature of light or we can say the photon nature of light so here um, the setup is very simple as we know we have we need a evaporated glass uh, tube with a window a quartz window and then there are uh, two cathode uh, materials like here you can you can take a photo cathode instead of photo cathode is made up of photosensitive material so that when light falls on it, it uh, electrons will be ejected out then a variable potential here i mean okay i need um uh, voltmeter to measure what is the potential difference between the photo cathode and the anode positive and the negative side and then it it is arranged to a um, you know variable potential like this so a variable potential here you can see okay we will attach it to a variable potential so that we can change the potential whenever i mean as per uh, requirement so i got this and then okay and then we can connect it to an emitter here to measure what amount of current will flow through this right so this is the whole setup now the light ray will actually um, you know will fall on the photocathode material so that the electrons will be ejected out and will be accelerated towards this um, end and you will be able to see um, current um, by the emitter so here um, there, there can be many photocathode materials like you can take sodium you can take zinc calcium you can take platinum you can take um, you know uh, silicon semiconductors as a photocathode material so here um, uh, this uh, for sodium for example we will uh, take sodium as the photocathode material around 10 to the power minus 6 watt per meter square okay this intensity of light is needed for a detectable amount of current by the emitter here okay so let's just um, uh, get it clear like uh, uh, what actually the time taken and what amount of energy will be gained by each electron of an atom uh, sodium atom in this process so for example if i if i uh, if if i'll say that the intensity here is 10 to the power minus uh, 6 watt per meter square to get a detectable value of current and then i will if i will consider um, uh, 1 meter square area and i will consider the sodium surface Okay, with sodium atoms arranged uh, like um, as per their periodicity like this okay whatever okay this way then uh, in one meter square area the um, number of uh, number of sodium atoms um, present will be around 10 to the power minus 19 atoms okay this is per meter square area this is the number of sodium atoms present per meter square okay so now uh, what we can obtain from this we know the intensity is equal to power per area so if i write the power is um, i mean okay 10 to the power minus 6 watt per meter square so watt per meter square so 1 meter square is the area and 10 to the minus 6 watt uh, is the power so there are 10 to the power 19 atoms per meter square so if i if i just calculate uh, power per atom per meter square then i can write um, the power per atom if i write power per atom um, and per meter square per unit area then i can write this to be 10 to the power minus 6 divided by this number 10 to the power uh, 19 okay which will give me 10 to the power minus 25 watt so this is the power gained by one atom okay in per meter square per meter square so 10 to the power minus 25 watt is the amount of power gained by uh, one, uh, one atom okay uh, present in one meter square so at this rate if you if you find out that this rate um, what is the time taken okay what is the time taken um for uh, for the uh, for the atom to gain uh, one electron volt just uh, let's calculate it so we know like um, one electron volt is actually nothing but 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule and uh, one volt so that gives us sorry um, coulomb into one volt that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule 
okay this is the value of an electron volt so let us calculate the energy that is associated uh, with the gain of um, i mean with with the power gain of one atom okay when 10 to the power minus 6 watt per meter square of intensity is incident on the sodium surface so we can write that e is equal to power into time so if i'll find out what is the time then i can write this as e divided by p so energy i said if if uh, energy gain of one electron volt if i'm considering 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule is the amount of energy gain then how much time it will take at a rate of power gain 10 to the power minus 25 watt okay so this way if you calculate i got 1.6 into 10 to the power 6 second this amount of time is needed so approximately i mean if i will uh, write how many days actually it is one day is actually 24 hours multiplied with 60 minutes into 60 seconds that 3600 0, 0 seconds so that gives us 8.64 into 10 to the power 4 seconds so if i'll find out number of days uh, for this i mean for this particular time 1.6 into 6 seconds this gives us 1.6 into 10 to the power 6 seconds divided by 8.64 into 10 to the power 4 seconds okay um so it gives around 18.5 days or 19 around really 19 or 18 days nearly equal to 18 days of time okay for the electron to gain one electron volt at the rate of 10 to the power minus 25 watt okay so it's actually you know if you'll see this time is nearly equal to you know, more than two weeks time uh, to see this uh, i mean to gain one electron volt but we know electron for one electron you know to you know come out of the surface it requires more than one electron volt several electron volts actually so several electron volts if it, it needed in in the maximum possible time of 10 to the power minus 9 seconds why 10 to the power minus 9 second we consider because you know the process of photoelectric effect is instantaneous the moment uh, light falls on the photosensitive material um, within no time uh, there is a detectable current shown by the emitter but uh, why i consider 10 to the power minus 9 second considering the uncertainty involved in the process of um, you know finding the time uh, at best you know the the time the time gap the time lag between the incidence of the light and the emission of the photo electrons uh, would be 10 to the power minus 9 seconds so if i'll consider those you know limits of experimental accuracy and we'll consider uh, the time lag is 10 to the power minus 9 seconds around though it is instantaneous okay 10 to the power minus 9 second is the i mean is the uncertainty that is involved in the process of calculation of time or determination of time in the in the method used in the setup used so in this particular time in this 10 to the power minus 9 seconds if we'll calculate the amount of energy then energy is equal to power into time which is 10 to the power minus 25 into 10 to the power minus 9 seconds that gives us 10 to the power minus 34 joule and if i will consider if i'll find out in terms of electron volt divided by around 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 just approximately just to write the order only i mean approximately i can write this is of around 10 to the minus 15 electron volt so 10 to the power minus 15 electron volt so as per electromagnetic theory an average atom will have gained an average atom will have gained um an energy of only 10 to the power minus 15 electron volt um to give one of its electron so only 10 to the power minus 15 electron volt can be gained in 10 to the power minus 9 seconds so this is very very less amount of energy 10 to the minus 15 electron you know to make the electron um, come out of the surface There's a, you know the electron actually requires several uh, several you know, electron volts okay so much more than this so um, for more number of electrons again you need more um, energy actually you know that's why you know you cannot explain uh, using this uh, method you cannot explain um, the uh, knocking out of electrons or uh, the electrons ejected from the 
surface when light incident light is incident on it so we definitely need a better theory to explain um this phenomenon of photoelectric effect so we we discarded um we discarded the wave theory or the electromagnetic theory to explain photoelectric effect only the particle nature of light or the photon theory or modern physics or quantum physics can only explain you know, the photoelectric effect uh, better way